Okay, so you having a good day so far? I am, indeed. Sundays are awesome nowadays with Game of Thrones and everything. Oh yeah. I hope Tyrion ends up with Daenerys. That's my uh, that's my <laughs> little a boy can dream type deal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> any, like, in that show. I'm kind of um, yeah. That's true. Well, you got the red wedding, red wedding though. <laughs> got some musicians there. You think about the uh, that part? Yeah, that part, and um, uh, also I would imagine um, I haven't learned it, but the um, the scream solo is probably yeah. similar to that. In the you stay on it one or two strings, is that the way it goes? The just the shred so section of that? Yeah, I mean scream is a little. I think scream is a little more intricate with all instead of just. So there's there's some inside picking to that one, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. There is. Right, right. So when you're when you're going for an increase in speed of something like that, do you just stick to playing the just the phrase itself, or do you work out things separately? Like for example, when I was learning it, something I thought would be a good idea because uh, my my picking hand would get worn out really quickly would be to um, I think it's 16 notes on one string and then go down. So I'd play like one, two, three, four. To a metronome, obviously, but I just focus yeah. on that and everything that goes into that the pick position, uh, breathing right, not getting all tense. Uh, what, what do you have to say about that? Did you do any separate exercises for that one lick, or how did you go about that? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, when it's like a core technique that's lacking, it's not just the results or anything, you just have to actually be able to play it. Then at least you'll just move it around a little, just instead of just sitting there. For hours on end, it gets uh, tiring and boring, so I'll just, I'll just move it around, play it. I mean, you got other songs like Backcountry, same kind of thing. When you say move it around, you mean position shifts with your left hand? Yeah, positions. Just really get that actual technique down. Mm -hmm. Tiring and boring. Just sit there just like this all the time is yeah, not really a ton of fun. So we really just move it around. Also, of course, the, um, if you were doing like. What was that? Something like that. Of course, great as well. And metronome, obviously. <laughs> Always fun. So, yeah. It's really an extent. When you think about that, is it, um, you get the basic feel down before you use the metronome, or do you use the metronome alongside your practices every single time? Or how do you integrate the metronome? I should probably use the metronome, or I don't really use it that much. Probably not as much as I should. But, um, if there is a part that I definitely know the notes, it's you know seamless at a slower speed. I just straight up have to get it up to speed, then I will use metronome, yeah. Or just use um, YouTube feature on just slowing down the song and get back in track or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. An amazing slow downer. That's a program. Song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't. Well, I've tried it at a friend's house, but I haven't actually downloaded it myself. I just use YouTube really. That's, yeah. It's, it's pretty good. It, it gets the sound a little bit better, just because the, or at least the sound quality doesn't sound as crappy. But, yeah. But yeah, so that's basically the answer to that. Yeah, so how do you structure your practices? Like, like when you were recording the um, your latest solo video of all the solos put together, 
Uh, yeah. How, how did you go about practicing for something like that? What were your sessions like? Uh, definitely just break it up into one solo until I get that solo right. Um, as far as I think I actually also recorded it. Or got one solo down, recorded it, got that just out of the way, finished, and then move on to the next. Um, I think it was maybe at one point, maybe two, three hours a day, something like that. It's pretty yeah. well, some in intricate stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I say that because that's how much I practice typically. I try to get at yeah. least an hour. Usually it's two or three, but sometimes I feel like I'm not practicing enough. So if you're doing two or three a day, that must be well. That's good. <laughs> good for me, anyways. <laughs> but and it was. I gotta say, when you did your um, afterlife solo straight into the Beast and the Harlot solo, I got so fucking mad at you because I was so mad that you could just rip through all those f the ending of Afterlife <laughs> and just go right into Beast and the Harlot. I was like, this motherfucker. Well, trust me, that took a while to get down. Trust me, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I could imagine. That's anybody who's even attempted, even if you play that for hundreds of hours, you still probably don't even know what's going into that. For most people. Yeah. <laughs> Topic of that afterlife solo. Let me. I just want to show you one more thing that made me so mad when I saw your video. Hold on, I gotta show you this. <laughs> Many hours later. So, about four months ago or so, back when I was still deep in practice for learning the afterlife solo. Um, yeah. I went to a thrift store and I found these glasses and I was like, oh, man. <laughs> These would be so cool to just put on in a solo video while, yeah, dude. while I just go like this and then edit in a little joint and then Mark hey. and running straight up jack my idea. <laughs> oh, oh man. Yeah. That's fun. I remember actually I planned that. Just watching Cinder, it's just so badass. Just, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, so I actually planned that. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's my friend is kick ass editor so they managed to actually get it down. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, I would imagine that would be... That, I don't even know where to start with video editing, so that's cool, you know, to do that. Yeah, it's... Get it stuff, man. Uh, going back to the, the question, uh, a little more in depth, when I say structure practices, um, is there a typical topic that you spend uh, more time on than others? Like, let's say, tremolo picking, one section versus... Um, I don't know, sweet picking, or yeah. do you just do you spend the majority of your time on the hardest parts? I guess that's what I'm asking. Does that make sense? If I'm learning something. Um, trying to get it up to speed. Like, let's say, say you were still practicing for those solos. Do you focus on the hardest things first, and yeah. use your majority of time on that? Um. Well, I I, I think I do. Yeah. If uh, let's say a sol solo or something is at eighty percent speed. You can play like 90% of it full speed, but there's one part holding back. I'll obviously just practice that part over and over again until I get it right. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I think the hardest parts uh, first. In terms of techniques you're asking about, certain techniques, if it's sweeping or whatever I practice most. Um, yeah, sure, if you can indulge us, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, that's well, more personally though, but I'm a huge fan of economy picking. Uh, actually I actually picked that up. I am. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. yeah, actually I picked that up without knowing what it was, like, mm -hmm. five, six years ago. I just did it and integrated it into my technique without really thinking about it. And I figured out, oh, it is actually something. So, ever since I've been, it's part of my warm up routine and everything, just actually going through a scale, a comic picking, you know. Makes sense. Like, why would you inside pick to the next string on top of it? It's just weird, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that just yeah. So that's uh. So uh, aside from that, obviously, there's a lot of sweeping going on. Yeah. <laughs> Trying no to. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> I guess uh, I can imagine. I, I still remember the first time I looked at the speed tempo for Afterlife and the amount of notes was that was inside. I just yeah. thought it was impossible, and there's no way that anybody could do that. And, yeah. Two and a half years later, finally get it down. Anyway, I remember sitting, uh, before I got an electric, I had an acoustic guitar, and I was uh, I was going to learn the after solo after about two months of playing. So I would go like... 
and I'll sit there and just be like, yeah, I can play it, I can play it, dude. <laughs> and still, so much fun, you know, even though it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally agree. Okay. Yeah. Let me skim next to the next question. Okay, so this is something I haven't looked it up recently, but I remember when I first started learning the stage intro, I started just looking up like uh, techniques for eight finger tapping, and I couldn't find anything on YouTube. So that's, uh, can you take us through what that was like learning that? Was that the first time you learned? No, 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 you learned the Sins, um, the, the Masterclass solo tapping first. That was, was that your first yeah. tapping lick? Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Okay. That's more, that's more advanced tapping, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing that, was that, um, did you just have to figure out the muting part yourself with your hand? Do you use your thumb at all? Like, how did you mute the higher strings and whatnot? As far as the Masterclass solo, is actually muting with his pinky, which is over like that. But um, with the stage, uh, that is actually something I'm, I'm just dying to know. Like ever since I heard the song, and seeing him played it, I know they have did it. I still don't really know how he does it. I have a weird little technique that I think kind of works. That's. Uh... Let me tell you. <laughs> You're talking about the. Uh... Oh, let's see. Yeah. That part. Going from here and then to the here, and then also when it's yeah, the the part of doing fuck can't even do it. I mean, I going from the the third string to the first string. That's what I get so much noise in there that I just can't seem to mitigate at all. Yeah. Do you use the, your heel on your hand, or what? what I, you I do, yeah. Okay. I use uh, the palm or whatever, heel, whatever. Um, so I kind of go... Uh, after that third note, I'm going to go to the E string. At the same time I hit that note, I actually just sort of... Okay, so I wasn't crazy. I was thinking that, but I wasn't sure. I'll have to focus on that. Yeah. As far as the whole... What is it? I just sat there for like maybe all together, like not in one sitting, but maybe like three, four hours just. Yeah. Every now and then, just uh, obviously at slow speed, but yeah, uh, trying to get that actual transition over. So, I think for the majority of the part when I was actually practicing it, I did just try and get that down. So, like that, but of course, every now and then. <laughs> No chance. Just no. It's not gonna. I was born with this little tiny 
For starters, um, I do want to make sure that I, my, my left hand can actually play it, so I'll just mute it and just... So if it's still not clean, then I know there's a problem with my picking hand. But with that specific section, I, it's kind of weird because I covered that solo like two three years ago. I can't play it the way I played it back then, for some reason. It's because I think I read... You know? I'm gonna up speed just. It just get sloppy and whatnot, so I don't know. But so now. I find that it's hard to do it in such a small space on those on those three strings. It's so much easier just to do. Yeah, it's true. If, uh, if you get a clean cut, you just go. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is actually. On the picking hand. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. So now I just go. Just straight up. But as far as uh, I remember when I learned it, I think I already kind of knew. I think I've practiced it like over the years before that. So I don't think I actually had to practice that part. Um, but again, if I didn't, I would just have to metronome, move it around, just get the core technique down. So, you know, instead of I can go. Or, It's interesting, you know. Good to know. Um, oh yeah, yeah. This is probably the one that sticks out most in my head. What kind of ear training do you do to get your ear that good? Because I listen to so many covers and I try not to judge people too hard. But when I hear a wrong note, I'm like, oh, okay, there's a wrong note. And I listen to yours and it's just like, nope, didn't see any. So what, what kind of activities do you do? Um. Well, for starters, I think I had a very good sort of uh, starting point when I started playing guitar because I learned piano, you know, ever since I was a kid. So, like the musicality and like my piano teacher didn't really bother with cheap music that much, so that gave me a good starting point. But um, for me, I don't really train that much. I haven't really done any active ac exercises, but uh, just actually doing it and. When I do some specific things, I don't just listen to a song and just, yeah, that's what it's being played. I'll slow it down, see if there's a, a, a isolated guitar track that I can check out, slow down that as well. Right, right, yeah. and, um, but I think also one important thing is to know your intervals and recognizing intervals. Because yeah. if you're playing one note and then you're just um, pausing playing or just do it real quick so you can hear the next, just the next note and then... And then I don't I just play it. I'll just sit there with my car and just have it slow down to maybe 20 or 0.25% speed, something like that. And then try and pick up notes. And I'll hear a, and then the next note is, and I'll hear that that's a third, you know, like one, two, three. So then I play that, and the next note is, and let's just say it's a D minor, like. And so I'll just play that, actually get that down. And then keep on practicing, going uh, forward and then going back, we sort of relearning it because all of us forget it. So yeah, that's um, as far as air training. I don't think I do anything else than that. You really just gotta do it. Yep, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's for me anyway. It's one of the least, not important, uh, 
least fun thing to do. Just sit there. Yeah. Oh, I know. Okay, that's a minor chord or whatever. Yeah. I know exactly yeah. what you mean. The thing is, you don't really think like yeah, minor for a third, etc., etc. You just after you know your intervals and you can just recognize them. Mm -hmm. Have to sort of think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a fifth or whatever, you know, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, also, another thing, I don't think I've used tabs in maybe a year or so. You have not, or you have? I haven't, yeah. because in when I learn solo, I'll either do what I said just now, or I'll first check out if there's a lesson on Chris Zupa. Oh, I, was about, I was about to say, yeah. is Chris Zupa dead to you? Because he doesn't. <laughs> the thing, the thing you do, I sort of do air training there as well, or learning by air, because I don't watch the whole video. I'll just skip a part to the part where he plays it slowly. Right, right, yeah, me too. Totally. And just, yeah, do the same thing, just listen to what's being played and play along, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's pretty yeah. good, and especially for the volume of shit he does, that's he's really amazing. Doesn't he pick with his nail or something? Yes. <laughs> yeah, <what's> that? <laughs> that's possible. So weird. <laughs> I guess his fucking nail must be at least one millimeter thick or whatever. I'm yes. Like, yeah. I have a hard time doing that. <laughs> Speaking of which, you use the Petrucci 1.5s. I think I read somewhere on a comment. Yeah, use them for like I don't know, three, four, maybe five years. I love them. Amazing. Yeah. They got a good size them. Are the Petrucci ones, are those jazz picks or are those full size picks? Remind me. What's the difference? Um, oh, jazz. Small the one? Jazz pick is like the smaller ones, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a large one, I guess. Okay. Full size. Alright. Yeah, I'll give those a voice. Yeah. Here. Oh. So, you can see the difference. Right, yeah, the jazz is the only Yeah, it's a little bigger, I guess it's maybe a jazz, I don't know. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Alright, moving on. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, so do you, do you just, <laughs> whenever you have free time, do you just practice? Or, like, how much do you usually practice per week? Practice how many days a week? It kind of def depends on how you define practice. If you mean like sitting down with a metronome or learning a core technique down. That, too. Should... that all kind of pretty much falls into the same category for me, I suppose. Yeah, because for me, I, I should definitely do it more, but I don't really practice that much while I sit down and actually focus like what I'm doing. Uh, as far as playing, you know, two hours a day, one to two hours a day, Mostly every day. Uh, obviously, for me, I'm a huge fan of solos and shredding and that stuff. So that's what's fun to play, and that's what I'll play. And of course, playing it a lot, you'll get better at it. Uh, so yeah, as far as actually practicing, um, maybe once a week, like uh, an hour. When you say when you say actual practicing, what's that difference? Yeah, I'm talking that mean about for you? Well, that's probably two hours a week or something. That's probably when I'm late time and trying to uh, learn hybrid picking. Just learning actual, like, focusing on the playing instead of just jamming, having fun, you know? Oh, okay. just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. You know? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. About one to two hours a week for that. Should be more, but, yeah. yeah I, mean, I would imagine for someone who's as accomplished as you are, you don't need to spend as much time practicing as opposed to somebody who's brand new and has everything. Well, always stuff, you know, and there's tons of things I want to get better at, absolutely, you know. Like, as a reason, hybrid picking, I just cannot for a life me get it down. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's a bitch to learn, that's for sure. Does, uh, are you familiar with Buckethead? Yeah. Yeah, does he hybrid pick, or is that is that chicken picking thing that he does, is that hybrid picking, or is that something else? I mean, I guess, yeah, it is. Uh, I, he's one of my favorites to go see perform. He's never been to Norway, has he? Not to my knowledge. Uh, That'd be crazy. So cool, if you ever get a chance to see him, bring all your uh, friends, man. They are, he 
he's absolutely a, he's an amazing performer like he can put on a show and for the millions of notes he plays you never even hear him fuck up it's bizarre that's insane that's absolutely crazy Um, that's just pure speed. I think maybe scream actually. Uh, I don't know. That maybe just me being kind of biased because I'm want to play. I'm so ten stuck. This is just that whole. Just that like yeah. I don't know. So it feels so faster. Maybe half life is faster. Um, it's, it's definitely more difficult for me to play scream. That's for sure. Uh, it sounds <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds I love that song. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. So let's say let's say you're trying to you feel comfortable at a certain speed or you, you think like oh, okay, let me pretext this. People, I see a lot of people on YouTube who are trying to play something fast, and you can just kind of tell that it's out of their range. Like they, they may have been doing this a hundred takes, and it's they're still fucking up a lot. Um, and you can obviously tell from skill level that all the things that they're doing wrong, and you would tell them to do something differently. How do you know what is the right tempo to be pushing yourself at, as opposed to, or uh, let me rephrase that, the how do you know you need to still put in repetitions versus increase the speed? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, for me, I don't really have a specific, like, if I'm working something up speed with a metronome, for instance. Um, if I can play it clean, you know, seamlessly, just not thinking about it. And I keep maybe, like, Play, if it's a short little phrase, like if it's uh, just you know, say it's just like that, then if it takes half a second to play, then I'll play it maybe 10, 15 times, try and bump up the tempo. If I fuck up, I'll go back. Uh, so yeah, as far as um, trying to remember what I do. <laughs> You don't really think about it. Those little, those aha moments where you're like, okay, I need to do this, and then you do them, and you integrate them, and then you kind of forget about them because you already integrated them. Yeah. You know what that's like. But uh, yeah, I'll play it just if it's like I said, a short phrase like that. I'll take half a second away. I'll play it maybe 10, 15 times clean. Without like, if I fuck up once, that's okay. You know, I'm not gonna start over just because of that. But um. Yeah, something like that. I'll bump up the tempo with 5 BPM, something like that, 10 BPM. No, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Did you say 5 to 10? You don't do five. Like little, little blips here and there, like 2 or 3 or 4? Um, no, I probably should, but I generally don't know. <laughs> Uh, sorry, uh, hybrid picking is the only one I've really gone for that's like super difficult, like aside from the ones I already know. Um, so weird jazz chords and whatnot might be difficult. I haven't really delved into it, but um, yeah, hybrid picking is a bitch. We try and get that down for like maybe half a year, and it's it's coming along, but it's uh, yeah, it's tough, definitely. And then um, trying. Just tons of different exercises, and yeah. Of course, if I practice a little bit more than I do, then maybe get a little more progress, but yeah. Do you have a favorite event solo? Or do you have a different favorite solo that you play? Um, 
I haven't really thought about that. How I have not thought about that. Um, maybe save me? Kick us over. It's really difficult though. I can't play it. That's another one where I hear a lot of people, the ending shred part of that, the do 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 Yeah. That, I could never figure out, or at least people, I, they never really got it right, but again, you, you did a pretty good job with that one too. Yeah, that's the, that's the sort of thing that I do with like my videos. I want to just get them as perfect as possible at the end, so I'll just grind the solo for hours, you know, before I record it. And there's one part of that, uh, it's like... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The dueling, the dueling back and parts, the left and right. It's... It's just that that one specific one. That's something I used to be able to play a lot more. Same with the stage thing, like, but I can't really play it now anymore. I don't know why. It's just yeah, exactly. Those those three notes per string. So yeah. starts off slow and then it progressively yeah. gets faster. Are those three note per string licks in there? Two it strings? is. It is? Okay. I was curious. That's the exact, exact same thing, yeah. I can't, I'm struggling with that as well. Exactly. The, 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 For me, that was actually one of the easier parts. That's yeah. probably of the whole economy picking thing. Because I think it's going. So you know it can go. I doubt it because if you just listen to the actual like specific specifically on that song, the actual isolated guitar track, you can hear his actual picking and it's like stupid fast. And if it was going, it would be too fast because the notes are. Like so I assume he's going. Or, or. Something like that. I think that's it, anyway. It sounds more right. And it's. I don't think he, even since she can actually play that quickly, like uh, picking wise, without the old. We can actually just sweep across the strings, you know? So just not the middle one, so it's just the top and the bottom note. One, two, one, one, two, one, one, two. So it's just that, that one, that one. Sorry, man. Ruining my life. It's okay. Yeah, no worries. All right. Um. We pretty much already touched on this one. Uh, let's see. Uh, I guess it's just one question then. When you just start learning something, do you try, are you only thinking about technique? You, do you ever think about playing it 
in time at all, or are you more focused on getting the notes perfectly where they're supposed to be on your fingers, as opposed to in time? How does how do you go about that? So when I'm actually first learning it. Yes. Yeah, I don't think I consider timing at all, really. Just getting it into the fingers, you know. And then once I know the notes that are being played, and it's kind of like I don't have to think about each individual notes. It just sort of happens automatically. That's when I'll start slowing down the song and then playing along with it, or metronome, you know. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's uh, that's pretty much it what I do there. Each note, it doesn't matter. Just get each note right, and then worry about. So you're like, oh, duh. So, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just like playing it correctly instead of. Yeah, I mean that's like you said earlier. Lots of people do that mistake where they go too fast and sort of skim over a couple of notes. Like if you're sweeping, skim over like that note and that note, for instance. Yeah, if you bleed together or whatnot. Yeah, like. I think specifically with like sweeping, the middle notes for me are like yeah. some most important. Right. Well, I was always keep top and bottom, but most three notes there make a lot of difference whether it's clean or not. Gotta get out there and practice, you know? Get all of them. <laughs> Definitely. No, um, well, as guitar, I'm just really, it's really just a hobby. It is. Uh, I'm also working on some, like, like 95% of the people that watch my videos aren't going to give a shit, but uh, just more like EDM type of stuff. I'm doing that with a couple of buddies. And um, other than that, No, um, that's actually something I've been thinking of doing. Uh, side note, but yeah, uh, creating my own music on the computer, yeah. There's, um, it's funny you say that because when I very first picked up the guitar, the thing that I thought I would do would be to incorporate guitar into EDM. Because I, I like, there's a couple of artists out there, one of them is Feed Me, and there's you know, like Dead Mouse, and a couple other ones who were kind of inspiring me back in the day. And I was like, mm. what That's true. But, um, and I was just kind of thinking about it for a while, and I, I got this thing, it's called a guitar synthesizer, I don't know if you've ever seen them, but there's a, a gizmo, and I got it, I use it for a little bit, but then I changed my interest, but it's this cool little thing where you take, it comes with this thing that's about the size of this, and it goes on your guitar, you mount it, you actually screw it in underneath the strings, it's, it's, a, it's an extra pickup, and it transforms... Ooh strings into basically MIDI values and you can create synths with it and you can play like violin notes on your guitar you can make it sound like pretty much anything so I don't know if you'd be if you look into anything like that but I, I might give you a couple of uh, ideas for pieces of equipment that you might be able to integrate the guitar yeah. into, into that music if you'd be interested. Okay. Never heard of that. Yeah, it's, it's a, <laughs> 
got mine new for 600 bucks, so it's not like totally super expensive, but the only thing is you gotta figure out how to mount it on your guitar, and I would hate to screw it into a, a, a custom model like that. <laughs> I, yeah, I that's right. Like a, on a $25 strap that I had. Yeah. Yeah, I got one lying around, so that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I'll that. I don't think anything else I might have on here. I'd like to talk about a couple of things uh, if you're doing the video. You would like to talk about a couple of things? Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, sure. What, what do you want to talk about? I don't know if it would directly apply to you, though, but anyway. Um, because I think. Like, let's say you're creating your own solo, and you're playing like, uh, let's say going, so you could go, it's a cool little phrase, but it's kind of, you know, it can be a lot more interesting, so it's just when you, when you just pay attention to all the details in there, just, you know, you got your slides, the vibrato, you got the, uh, I don't know what, what that's called, but, I love stuff like that. Just mm, don't think so. Yeah, you gotta get the right, uh, right spices in there. Yeah, exactly. Just pay attention to all the little details. It's so it really is. It's it's almost hard to at least for me anyway. I notice it's hard to take time away from improving my technique because for whatever reason that's my favorite thing to do. Um, just been trying to get faster, but mm. to try and stop and just say, okay, I'm gonna pay attention to this one stupid note and make sure I bend it exactly the way that I want to bend it and make sure that every single time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly.
practicing, probably the majority of my stuff was the Afterlife solo. About 75% of everything. That and then sprinkling in Roman Sky in the stage. Roman uh, Sky's not too hard. But getting your hands warmed up for the chords, that's the other thing. It's a different kind of strength that you need to do sustained chords versus shredding over something. I'm not honestly say that I think this stage is obviously my personal opinion, but I think that's the most difficult solo, to be honest, when I think about it. Are you talking about the, the ending, those arpeggios that we talked about earlier? Yeah, the, the intro, yeah. Oh, the intro? The yeah, the top. Yeah. Man, I needed it. It's... talking about the, you mean, probably the ending, right? The... Yeah. All that shit? Yeah. Oh, actually. <laughs> Sorry. Cause, no, 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 because no, that's, what, <laughs> that's what's coming up for me. Once I finish the Afterlife solo, that's what um, that's what's going to be on my agenda, is that thing. Because it, it's, I know the notes. Oh, that's, that's one little thing, another thing I was going to ask you about. It's a stupid little detail again, but so that, that last arpeggio, the descending arpeggio where it goes, Like that part. Um, is it? Because <laughs> um, Zupa plays it this way. But then I notice Sin, I think he goes up to the ninth fret or the tenth fret on that. How do you, which note do you descend to on that, um, that skipping one? So. <laughs> Not sure which part you're talking about. It's sorry. Yeah, I go to the yeah. Okay, let me just ask this: What's the lowest note in that that descending phrase? Where do you That's end six. on six on the on the A? Maybe go down. Maybe one or something like that. You know? Like I said, it's, it's kind of a meaningless detail when you think about all the other ones. So fast, and, like each note isn't that important. I feel like when it's just fucking yeah. Uh, did you also know that he goes? What's that? Uh, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> your video. No, I, yeah, 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 totally. But not to do that. I, um, I get why it does that. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's easier on a, on a position. It is? Like, it's easier for your hand to relax to do that, but it's harder to get it down, obviously, because it's on two different strings. Yeah, that way. I don't know. I thought Yeah. So, it's just like getting that. I just go right down so I can pull right off to it on my. On my uh, and that's the same thing I was doing with uh, the. Like. Yeah, yeah. You exactly the same time you hit that next one. Another thing I do with that, by the way, if you're gonna learn it, um, I set the same thing probably a couple hours, just going like, what was it? Yeah. Just going. Yeah.
So it doesn't matter what notes there are, they just, you know, can go... Just to get the actual technique down there. So, just come up with a pattern. I just went simple. Or, you know, that's, uh, that definitely helped me uh, to get that sort of technique down. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I haven't been to one, but uh, the only thing I really do outside of just playing at home and YouTube videos is uh, if someone is going to have a performance, sing something, they can have me as uh, as a guitarist. I'm mostly acoustic guitar, just, you know, four chords, pretty much it, you know. So, nothing really exciting, but, you know, it's still fun to get out there and play a lot of the concerts, you know. Awesome. Thank you. That's what I use it for. Especially the, yeah. um, your riff video is really cool. Just the, um, the 10 minute one where you strung all those riffs together. Yeah, yeah. It's really fun. It's like a little journey. So thank you for that. Yeah, that was uh, a ton of fun to make. Mm -hmm. That's like my baby. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. And I rarely ever really listen to or watch my own videos. Like, if I go back to my videos, oh, yeah. I'll do that. Especially the old ones. Like, there's, I gotta delete that. There's like a piano video on my channel. I, <laughs> I think I've seen it, but I never, I, I didn't take the time to watch it. Well, good, <laughs> don't. <laughs> I have the same. I have the same things. I have songs that I played, like you know, six months into my playing. I'm just like, oh my god! Like I want to keep it up just to remind myself how bad I was, you know. <laughs> yeah, but that's actually pretty good though. I'm thinking of actually uploading a video of I was probably 14 maybe. I played for maybe a year. I was playing Nightmare, and then you know I was sitting there just. <laughs> It's just horrible, mm -hmm. and family was in the background, and yeah, probably gonna upload that someday. Just why not? You know? Yeah. Kind totally. of... I remember before I knew anything about mixing, I I plugged my amp for some reason has a line out. I'm not even sure what that was for, but I, mm. I plugged my line out straight up into my sound card, and that's how I recorded my song and put it on YouTube. And it just sounds like it sounds good coming out of the amp, but going into the sound card off that, it's not supposed yeah. to do that, and it just sounds super fuzzy, and oh, it's, it's just the worst tone ever, and looking back on it, I was just, man, I didn't know anything about what I was doing, but I was still having fun, and the music itself I thought was kind of cool, but it just sounds yeah. so garbage. 
And then, of course, there's no background. And, yeah. mm. <laughs> Crappy user? Huh? What's the amp you're using? Um, it was, uh, I don't remember it. It was one my dad used to have. It was something from the 80s. It was really okay. cool. But right now I got a, I just got like a 2,000 watt solid state that I practiced with. Um, and then I got a little, a battery powered practice amp that I can take downtown and play on the street if I want to. Um, so that's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't have, I don't have a whole lot of gear. I just got this, uh, a boss pedal that I got on Craigslist a while ago. And it, it does really nice clean tones and really nice distorted tones for playing Avenge. It sounds really neat. Or at least really close to the album. I mean, you use bias effects, right? Yeah, so this is my whole rig right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so, you, you can play live through that, that iPad and it, there's no delay or anything? No. Just go straight into my speakers. Wow. And That's still. I've used it for maybe five years and it still blows my mind. Just you can get those tones out of an iPad, you know, it's crazy. I don't have a whole lot of Apple devices, but I imagine they have something for tablets too. That's, that's cool. Mm -hmm. right after, I'm anti Apple because I hate paying for. You can get the same quality on an Android, but whatever. That's true. If the software is on Apple, then there's not much you can do about it. No, I can't. Yeah. No, it's, uh, I think it's talk we were talking about something, I think, that was like a year ago, about finally getting it on Android, but uh, I haven't heard anything since, so I don't know. But yeah, that's the main reason I've got an iPad. I probably wouldn't if it weren't for Bias of X. So, is Bias, they're not available on Android devices? No, I don't think so, anyway. I don't have Android, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's annoying, anyway. Let me just talk forever. Let me rack my mind for anything else that I would have thought about over the years of asking you. I've been watching your video for some time. I remember seeing you, like, way back on, like, uh, I don't know, stage or exist or something like that. I know what you're going to say, too. Yeah? <laughs> something to the degree of best comment of the oh, year or some shit like yeah, that. I remember, I remember that, yeah. I was like, oh, hey, he is there and he does look at the comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, that ending is, it, it's so great because it, the whole time I'm just thinking, like, this is something that, it, that Sin would do. Like, those no choices, yeah. the way he played it, the arpeggios and all that stuff was, and the way you changed the, I can't exactly say what you did, but the, the way you changed which, like you played the arpeggios, but you played the same one differently a couple times, and it was, it's just a, a good little mind fluff, the way you chose to do that. It was really cool. And Instead of just playing like 3-2-1, 3-2-1, 3-2-1, the whole time, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. That was a, that was a bit she called. Yeah, I would imagine. How long did it take you to, to do all that? Oh, a long time. <laughs> you, you don't keep track of like the hours or anything like that? Well, I can't remember really. Uh, but I mean, it's a 15-minute song, and getting that all in one take, just yeah, that's yeah. that's take a while for sure. It almost looked like the chords gave you the most trouble out of all that. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, I can't remember exactly if I fucked up on the. Uh, Yeah, okay, um, I think it was the, I think I was doing octaves, I was trying to do an octave like that, and I was kind of, something like that. I mean, Yeah, I think so. As far as I know. And then like two years later, I saw Chris Dupa did a intro to the 
intro tutorial of that. that oh, he did? That. Yeah, yeah, he did. They sounded pretty good. They, I mean, for my ear, check I, don't, that. I don't have the best ear, but he did pretty good for his little rendition. We'll check that out. And then you can comment and be like, hey, this is wrong. Or, <laughs> not, not bad, dude. <laughs> You'll get there, keep practicing, bro. <laughs> no, but, um... I want to slap that in another medley though, for sure. That is going to be a bitch to get those harmonies, because that is, yeah. Oh, the, you that, mean yeah, the, um, the harmonies for the intro of, the, of Exist? Yeah. Hmm. Are you going to play that in a later video? I want to do that someday, but uh, I don't know. And I definitely can't play that now, or at least that will take weeks of trying to record it, I think. <laughs> Because you can't really punch in or anything like that, because it's all continuous just playing. Mm -hmm. And actually getting that, those harmonies synced up together. Mm -hmm. That's most hard enough for me just doing the backcountry, the. Oh, yeah. Or whatever the fuck it was. I did that yesterday. <laughs> it took a good half hour. Was like, yeah, oh the one. It's like. It's like What is it? So, which part are we talking about? Uh, there's Zach's part, which is... Yeah. And then there's the... Zach's part is string skipping, which doesn't make any sense, but... Yeah. And then... Yeah. yeah. It's weird. <laughs> I and mean, then hearing it, you'd think it would just be like. Or... Yeah. No. It's weird. I love that. It's just like, sort of makes up like one melody, but it's just weird when it's on its own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like... That's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. There's one more question. Um, I was curious. You don't have to answer this if you don't want to. But I was just curious. Um, do you partake in any any alcohol or drugs at all, or are you a straight cut guy? I mean, I drink. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. You didn't really strike me as a pothead. No. <laughs> I imagine. I imagine it's a little different in Norway. Is it? It's not. Well, it's probably illegal over in Norway, right? I think. As far as like my friends, maybe like I know three or four people that like smoke mm -hmm. fairly fairly regularly. But uh, yeah, no, I've never really messed with that stuff. Yeah, you know? I didn't think so. It, it, yeah. I can't play. That's the thing is like you think about I don't know what you think, but uh, a lot of American musicians, it's like they all smoke weed, and you know Jimi Hendrix smoked weed, and everybody smokes weed and plays guitar, but Whenever I smoke it and I try to practice, it's like I can't. My fingers don't work right for some reason. So I, I mean, if I hmm? if I'm one beer down and I just feel my fingers just so slow and yeah. it's just like, oh fuck no, damn it. Yeah. I'm just saying, like how Dragon Force and whatnot can just go on stage hammered and just still, it would fuck up all over the place, but still. Yeah. <laughs> She just starts fucking going ballistic and crazy. It's just two different people. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Sin, too. Sin drinks at all his shows. Yeah, yeah. As far as mood wise, like, I'm definitely more like happy and what if I drink, but I'm just my like body just or fingers, you know. I try to play guitar. Right, right. Drunk, it just <laughs> doesn't work at all. Like, yeah. Let's go play guitar. You're like, yeah, I'm Fuck <laughs> all over the place, yeah. Yeah. I I try not to drink more than one cup a day, but I, I find that coffee before playing is definitely the 
definitely one of the best uh, things that gets you through a great practice session. That and Adderall. Yeah. I only do that like once a week, but if you just need to do something for a long ass time, just take some Adderall. That's what I do. But, I haven't really thought about just straight up coffee before playing guitar or practicing. That's a, that's a good idea. Whatever works for you, obviously, whatever you're doing works very good. And you're not obese or fat, you look pretty healthy. You must eat pretty healthy too, right? Yeah, I try. There's off days, at least. People like me who just got good genes and you can eat anything and people get mad at you. I think so. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, like you say, I just try to eat generally healthy. Meats, mm. proteins, eggs, vegetables. Um, try not to eat a lot. I don't. I never drink soda or anything. But I drink diet soda, but that's about it. Yeah. 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 Fucking yeah. rebel, dude. Yeah. Advice that's not too bad. You're, <laughs> you're not a meth head. I can only imagine what you on meth would be like. I, all your solos would suddenly get faster. <laughs> <laughs> I should try it. Oh, that was another question I forgot to ask you. Um, okay. Do you practice only to the the normal tempo, or do you ever take it beyond just to see if you can get more comfortable? Actually, I do that every now and then, just to like if I'm at maybe ninety percent speed, if that's how fast I can actually play it. I'll bump it up to maybe one ten or something like that, and then play along, fuck up all over the place, and then go back to ninety or hundred. And it'll feel just a lot slower, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah I just kind of get used to it being a lot faster than it really is. That's uh, something I should do quite a bit. Have you ever seen Matty M, his videos? He does a lot hey. of bench solos. Yeah. There was one, he did the, um, I think it was Shepherd of Fire. He, he played it on, like, 110% speed, and everyone's giving him shit. They're like, this is fake because it's faster. And he's like, I already played it faster <laughs> because that's what I wanted to do. And it's like, yeah. yeah. He has one of those long ass tentacle yeah. pinkies. I know, this fucking. <laughs> that was weird. I remember like tons of people were accusing him of speed in videos. What's happening to me as well lately? <laughs> and that's a compliment. You know? that's yeah, exactly. It is. It is. If you th I yeah. mean, the people that think that obviously don't play guitar. Like, you you kind of just know. Like, if you've been playing for a while, you can tell who's real. And if there's, I haven't come yeah. across anyone who's fake. Sound to, to figure out yeah. sound from another sound. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So where do you work? Do you have a job? Yeah. Um, I work at just like a call center at the moment. I'm trying to get an IT job. So, uh, yeah. Well, hey, man. Come over to the States and I'll get you hired. I work for Verizon. I'm a, a network engineer. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Start packing tomorrow, man. Yeah, it's once you know what you just know. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, what kind of call center is it? Is it like a customer service? Are you selling people stuff? Selling stuff. Like, it's probably mainly a pizza place, like a chain. As, like, that's the main thing. And then there's several different, like, food chains. Like, where people can call in with whatever the fuck, like, complaints and. Orders and whatnot, you know. Mm -hmm. so. you ever just take a guitar to work and play it in the background and then and just see if it feels better? Should do that someday. How would you like a solo with your order? Yeah. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Is that real? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it's, uh, it's a living, you know. Exactly. But yeah. I want to thank you as well. You know, I think I might just actually start like doing some lessons every now and then. You know. Yeah.
between, like if someone asked you to teach them a solo, it wouldn't take much more than an hour if they recorded it and you just went over and over and over with them. Yeah. Um, there's all kinds of things I feel like you can do with your with your talents. And I know you, you said guitar is just a hobby, but it's like, I feel there's a lot of ways to make money with it. You don't have to be in a band or whatever. Yeah. No, definitely thought about it. Now it's it is a hobby, but I want it to be more than that, of course, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, and lessons is a good place to start, you know. Have you heard of Jason Richardson? Yeah, yeah. monster. He is. The... I'm trying not to fanboy out, but I don't, yeah. I don't really have a taste for his music. But his his he's so fast. He's probably the fastest player I've ever seen that I. I yeah. Out. And the reason I brought him up is because he he said that he makes the majority of his money through selling tablature for his own songs. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. I wouldn't have thought that. But and the guy bought himself a Tesla last week, I saw. Someone buy him a Tesla? Oh, well, he know? bought it. So, I guess he, yeah, he's, doing right. he's doing all right. Yeah. But yeah, that guy's insane. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, and I just remember watching um, Jared Dines' Shred video, and he's in there where they're going back and forth. And his last solo, he's doing yeah. like. This and <laughs> just like. Oh, it's insane. Like, <laughs> I've actually gotten a request a couple of different times for to. Uh, what's it? Music. Yeah. Uh, Av Aviator? Is that it? <laughs> or, I, I don't know. It, it's something like that. And every time I see it, it's just like. <sighs> like. <laughs> It's so difficult. I tried learning it once and I just, no, no, nothing happened. Nothing. Half speed, I would well, I mean, half speed is probably somewhat easy, but yeah. that's like 80% is going to be unbearable. That's going to yeah. be hundreds that's... of hours. Yeah, it's insane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no worries. Well, I guess I'll um, I'll let you go. I'll, I was gonna edit this video and like put some timestamps on it for specific questions and whatnot. Um, yeah. Maybe edit out a couple things like me walking away and shit like that. But um, <laughs> is there any is there any ideas that come to your head of what you would want to do with this video or what you would would you want to do anything with it? Um, the only thing that's really crossed my mind is uh, if it if, if the quality is fine and whatnot, then maybe post it or just you know DM me for lessons. You know, yeah. here's an example. I, I feel like this could be a good advertisement for yourself. Yeah, that's like, come up with some questions and I'll answer you. you know? Yeah. you're learning and you come up, come up against that brick wall, you just start digging through YouTube to try and find something, that yeah. someone that will enlighten you to the next step. And um, there's one guy I, I found, his name was uh, Mike Filipov, who's actually a student of that Tom Hess guy. He has yeah. the most precise details about technique. Um, and I took his course and it, it, it pushed me through the next level. I started doing a couple things differently that, that got me going. So, you know, People that are, especially for someone like you that is doing a specific type of music that everyone's interested in, um, they can directly apply that to what they're doing. It's not just like a sweeping, a random sweeping pattern, then they try to play it over what they're learning. You know, so you can give them specific insights and things that you had trouble with. You're like, oh, and watch out for this part because this is probably going to blow you up. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. You know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Go check out this Tom Hess guy. a sweet pattern like this fast and he's telling you he's literally talking to you while he's doing the whole thing <laughs> and he's going at, at like the same exact perfect tempo and I can't do that. I can't talk while I play. No, just, I can't either. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work. I'll find that video, I'll send it to you, uh, just so you can see. But he 
he the way the way he runs his thing, he has a clinic basically, um, where people will basically like a seminar, a guitar seminar, and he'll bring a student up, sit him next to him, and they'll say, Okay, I'm having trouble with X. Why can't I play this? And he listens to it, watches it, and he analyzes it and he'll say, I noticed you're doing this, this and this with your fretting hand. So try doing this. Don't play it all the way through uh, one of his big things that uh, resonated with me, as far as sweeping and getting sweeping clean, he says, when you're when you're going through sweep picking, find the note that you have trouble with, and then end there and pick it a couple more times. So, for example, if you're having trouble with this note on a major arpeggio, so play it like. And then just so on and so on and play through the arpeggio and stop on each note that you're having trouble with as you're practicing and layering that in with your whatever it is that you're learning it really gets the notes to stand out in your mind um, so that's like one little thing that i learned from him yeah and he very has, interesting yeah he has a lot of different ideas for getting people to overcome whatever technical fault they're currently at hmm. He's the best that I've seen, anyway. Um, yeah. I'll definitely pick this guy up, man. Huh? I'm about that. Yeah, and Let's try some, some weird stuff. And you, you can even extend that to like, say you're, say you're playing the end of the afterlife solo. You, you play it. I think you play it a little differently than me, but let's just say you're doing, or whatever, and play. Play at each note and then stop on a certain note and see if you can stop on the note and make sure that when you're playing it, you're playing it clean. So like... And you just go back uh, make sure each note is clean as you're, if you're trying to play it in time. Yeah. So, okay. Little things like that. I don't know if you ever tried anything like that, but... Uh, I think I have, though. I'm try that. It got me to overcome a couple barriers back when I first started implementing it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Get some stuff to try out. <laughs> if you ever get stuck, which yeah. you never do, I'm sure. Oh, I do. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's about right, man. Is it Ronning or is it Ronning or how do you pronounce that? I've never seen an O with a slash in it before. Yeah, it's it's U. 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 It's yeah. Running. So it's actually running. <laughs> Wait, say it. Okay, say the whole thing. Running. Running. Yeah, I guess. I'll have to Google Translate it. Martin Running. Yeah. Running, so. yeah, it's, I guess running, yeah. But Closest, yeah. Just put it on, at the end of your videos, just do, hey, it's Martin Running. Like, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that's Martin Running here. I'm gonna get into this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Good luck to you with all that you do. I hope to be seeing more of you in your videos soon. Yeah, thank you, man. This was awesome. Yeah, well, have a good day. So, send me a video. Awesome. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.